appreciate being here and we're looking forward to talking to everyone today about grant seeking for libraries. My name is Kendra Morgan and I am a senior program manager here at Web Junction, which is part of OCLC. And a big part of my work is uh, helping to apply for grants and then also to administer grants and doing project management. So that's the second session that I'll be talking about later this month. And I'm joined by my colleague, Steph Harmon. Hi everyone, I'm Steph Harmon. I'm the program design and development manager for Web Junction here in Seattle, Washington. I work on institutional fundraising, program design, and partnerships for our grant-supported projects. So we wanted to really focus on four main components today uh, during the presentation. And one of the things that we want to encourage you to do, and I can see the chat is enabled, and we're looking forward to seeing both your comments and your questions come through in chat. If you have resources to share, please do that. I think that that's one of the best benefits of these online environments is that we have the opportunity to quickly share things and, and ask questions. So do that. We're going to be checking things out. We'll take some pauses if we need to. But the things that we want to focus on today are how to seek and evaluate grant opportunities, uh, aligning the library's mission with the mission of your funder, and then building organizational support for a proposal, which can be a really critical part of the work that we do. And then finally, submitting a strong application. So before we go too far in, we wanted to share some information about what we do and why grant seeking is important to us and our work. And Steph and I are both part of Web Junction, which is part of OCLC. And since 2003, Web Junction has offered a free online learning network that connects library staff to people, skills, and the ideas that help libraries to adapt, lead, and thrive. So our professional development and continuing education opportunities for library staff at any stage of their career or library position, and a key part of this is that everything that we offer through our site is free. And this is often made possible because of grant funds. The Web Junction team designs and leads regional, national, multinational initiatives to spread innovative practices across libraries. And we're able to do this in partnership with funders, uh, with library associations, state libraries, uh, information schools, and other nonprofit organizations. And we do this through three main sources of funding. So the first is that our organization, OCLC, makes an investment into Web Junction to make our resources freely available. And that includes providing things like staffing and infrastructure that allow us to provide our services. The second is through state libraries, including the New York State Library. And right now, 32 state libraries currently provide Web Junction with cooperative support, which means that they see the value and importance of making what we offer freely available to everyone. And finally, through grant funding. So we actively seek out grants and funders that align with our mission and that can support strengthening the role of libraries in our communities. And we also support other organizations on their grant funded projects. So a lot of times we partner with people who are applying for grants uh, and when they receive their grant, we help them implement what they want to be able to accomplish. So Web Junction is freely available for everyone to use, and we'll be sharing quite a few resources today from the site. Uh, so you're welcome to explore the website and learn more about our work and how it can support you and your library. The grants and programs that we run result in a wide range of resources on the website, and those can include free webinars on library topics. A big part of the grant funding that we get goes to developing self-paced courses. It's really one of the biggest parts of our work, and you'll find over 300 self-paced courses and webinar recordings in our catalog. And the grant funding plays a major role in all of these efforts, the research that we do, our newsletter and the stories that we feature, and we seek out grants from both public and private funders. So now that you know a little bit about us, we want to learn a little bit about you. So we're going to use the poll and Mary's going to open that up for you. Uh, and we want to know a little bit about your grant experience. And so we're asking about your experience with grant proposals. And so the two questions that we have, or the two options that you have rather, are I have never worked on a proposal 
or I have worked on a proposal. And we really want you to think about that broadly when it means what it means to work on a proposal. It could mean that you were an internal reviewer. It could mean that you wrote the proposal, uh, that you helped answer some questions as people were building it. It doesn't have to mean that you did the whole thing because there are so many different roles. All right, I can see the responses coming through. Good, very good variety. We got about 70% of people who have worked on a proposal in the past and about 30% who have not. So looking for your first time, which is great. That is really helpful. Thank you. And then I'll turn it over to Steph for our next question. Yeah, thank you, Kendra. So our second question is about, well, if you think back over the last five years, have to your organization received a grant? Again, let's use this poll. So um, your organization has received a grant, your organization has not received a grant, or you don't know. And another great thing that would be great if you could share it would be, you can put it in the chat. If you have received a grant or multiple grants, how much funding has your organization received? All right. Oh, and I'm seeing some numbers coming through. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like 86% have received a grant. 12% don't know, that's also fine. And just a few of you have not received a grant to your knowledge. Terrific, thank you so much, everyone. Now I'd like to talk about successful grant seeking. So this talk is gonna cover some overarching ideas. And the first one is that grant seeking takes time and planning. The next one is understanding how to align your grant proposal with what a funder offers. That can take some research. So we'll give some tips on how to do your homework and what kind of homework can be helpful with that. The next one is how to create a compelling case for funding. It requires an understanding of a foundation or an agency's mission. So that's, we'll get into that in a minute and how it's not usually about your library, it's about them. Um, the fourth one is that relationships are everything and funders are organizations made up of people. So building relationships with them is key. And the last one is that the grant seeking process often isn't a one and done kind of thing. It can be an ongoing cycle. So we'll be touching on each one of those things further throughout this presentation. This slide, I hope that it doesn't seem overwhelming, but this is a very detailed and robust version of what grant seeking can look like. Now, this might not be your jam and that's okay. I'm not gonna run through it right now because Kendra and I are gonna cover some key aspects of it later, but this gives a good overview of what can be involved when you're planning to look for funding. So it's good to know that when you are sitting out so you can give yourself enough time to, to make it all happen. All right, so now we can talk about how to find opportunities and then how to figure out if they're a good fit for your library. I'm gonna pass it on to Kendra for this part. All right. So all funders have something in common and that these are organizations that want to and often need to distribute money and they really want strong applications for their grants. They need prepared organizations to apply for their grants and that's really why we're here today. So thank you. We want you to feel empowered to be one of these applicants and help funders to see that their investment can make a difference in your community. When we think about how opportunities look different, there's usually like one of two ways. The first is, here it is. These are the times when you get an email from a funder or from a colleague who says, look at this opportunity, applications are open now. And this could pique your interest and seem like a great idea. And it definitely might be. I know that Metro has lots of grants and projects that libraries can participate in, which is an amazing opportunity to be able to take advantage of. And those will often come to you. And the second approach is really, where is it? And this is more of the grant seeking style. When you need to find the funders, you need to find the opportunities. And one of the biggest things you need to be able to do is understand why you are looking. Yeah, and as soon as you know why you're looking for grants, then you can start doing your homework or prospect research and, and you can find who might fund your proposal. One excellent resource for this is the Visualizing Funding for Libraries data tool. It's made by Candid, and it can help you learn about different foundations' interests and their priorities, and even how big the grants are that they award. This tool is really cool because it can also tell you about what foundations provide funding in your geographic area. That could be your city or your county or your state, and also who's funding the kind of programs you might be interested in supporting, like summer learning programs or creative aging programs. 
So use this tool to find out who's funding populations you serve. Like maybe you're looking to do a program with rural job seekers, or maybe you're serving small business owners. The Candid tool can also show you who's offering the kind of support that you're looking for. And it can help you find seed money to start a new program or capital support for new construction or even for library equipment. It's really helpful. As Kendra mentioned before, every funder's in the business of investing and improving the world in some way. They have a mission and they fund organizations and projects that help fulfill their mission. What you are asking them to invest in should align with their mission. So let's talk about where to start with that. When you're asking for funding, don't lead with the needs of your library. Funders interested in how their investment is gonna have a meaningful and lasting impact on the issues or the communities that they care about. So think about all the ways you can show how your library makes a difference in and for your community. I think one of the best ways to show what you know is storytelling. And that's basically what good grant writing is. It's capturing and telling some stories that reflect your community's needs and how your library can help them. Kendra, you were talking with me the other day about a library up in Kalamazoo that was a really good example of this. Yep, we had a grant <laughs> from uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Services to look at how libraries were responding to the opioid crisis. And the library in Kalamazoo, Michigan had received a small grant uh, through another organization to offer peer navigators in their library. So individuals with lived experience who could help people in the library who were looking to address issues surrounding homelessness, substance misuse, um, accessing benefits that were available to the community. It was a really deep community need and something that the library staff really saw surfacing up on a daily basis, that there were questions that needed to be answered uh, and individuals who needed help. So the organization that they partnered with, the Southwest Michigan Recovery Institute, was able to come in and offer peer navigators for several hours a week um, under this grant program. And together, they were able to tell the story of how impactful this work was with the community. They talked to individuals who had been able to meet with the peer navigators and were really able to use that to leverage additional support and funding for the library so that the peer navigators were able to come in 20 hours a week. So really increased the amount of access that people had and the services that were available to the community. And that was the story, right, that they were being able to meet community needs and where the needs were. Uh, and the library was a really important piece of that puzzle. Um, but by capturing the story and capturing the impact, they were able to leverage that for, for more money through another funder. Yeah, I think that's a really powerful story of how grants can help a library respond to a priority need in their community. Thank you. And priorities are really important to consider. You want to find a funder whose priority matches yours. And it can be helpful to make sure that once you find alignment, you emphasize that in your proposal. So if a funder uses specific frameworks or jargon to talk about their vision and their mission, then consider how you might tailor a proposal to use their language or language that feels authentic to you and your library so that it will resonate with their staff and their decision makers. You know, funders can usually tell when they've been sent a generic letter. They can see if a grant writer hasn't done their homework and they don't know anything about them. So tailoring your proposal to them is respectful and it might also keep your proposal from getting tossed out. So talking about respect, it's good to just note that funders are not ATM machines. They are foundations made up of people who care really deeply and positively about impacting our communities. So I always try to find meaningful ways to connect with potential funders. And many funders will tell you exactly how they want to be approached on their websites. Sometimes there's an email address. If there's an email address, email them. It's an open invitation. If there's a phone number, they put it there so that you can call them. So pick up the phone and see about if it's possible if it's meeting with a staff to talk about your concept, or maybe you have an early draft of your proposal that you could float by them if they're open to it. This can be a really great way to find out if your proposal is gonna be a good fit for that funder and whether or not they're gonna show signs of interest of being you know, able to fund it this round. Some funders also offer webinars or informational sessions about their funding opportunities. And that's also a great chance to ask questions in the chat after presentation. Other funders might offer the opportunity to send in 
letters of inquiry or letters of intent. Sometimes those are shortened as LOIs and others might offer a way to reach out to the program officers for advice. And that could be rare, but when it's there, it's really good to take advantage of it. In, in fundraising, there's an old adage and it goes like this. If you want advice, ask for money. But if you want money, ask for advice. So take those opportunities that you can find to start building a relationship with staff. And um, don't be afraid to use your network. You know, See if there's someone in your circle or in your professional network who knows people who might be connected to someone on the board or someone on staff at an agency or at a foundation and see if they are willing to bridge you through to them to, to set up a meeting. Sometimes that personal connection is a really good way to open a door and start a conversation. That's what you're looking for. How do I start the conversation? And once you get that conversation started, it's just the beginning of a longer cycle, possibly. Not always. Some things, some things end, but not everything is one and done. So Often there's a cycle of grant making. Grant makers have a calendar where they will often publish their key deadlines. So you can look and see when are their key dates? When is their submission? I usually put that information in my calendar. So that helps me plan ahead and get ready for whether I need to send in a letter of intent or whether or not, whether or not I need to send a preliminary proposal. Those kind of deadlines are, are really useful to have in your calendar. And then I also always like to put in when I expect to hear whether or not I've gotten an award. Not only does it give me something actually really exciting to look forward to, but it also gives me um, you know, a chance to sort of see if there's a way that I can connect with the funder before or after that to, to follow up if needed. Once a grant's been awarded, then you start the project, but the relationship building can keep on going. So after you send your thank you note acknowledging the funder's award, then you can keep nurturing your connection with the funder in meaningful ways. You could publish information about work they're doing in the newsletter. You can do a press release about having received the funding. You might put something on your website, your social media. Try to profile the impact that their investment is, is going to make in your community. Find channels to highlight their good work in ways that they require. Some funders require that and some funders appreciate it. So find out what's appropriate. There are also funders who don't want acknowledgement. So that's also really good to note and be respectful of. Thanks, Steph. We want to transition to talk about the importance of organizational support uh, and what it looks like and how to build it for a proposal. And this is going to feel and look different depending on a few things. And the first is the size of your library. If it's just you or are you in an organization with 200 employees? Um, where you sit in the organization and your role can really impact a grant proposal development. If you're the library director, you come to this with a lot of decision making power, but you still have stakeholders who need communication about the idea and the project. And the third is that pre existing relationships and experiences, negative experiences can weigh on our willingness to try again or try something new. And positive experiences also impact our work because they come with trust, right? And that trust helps to be able to navigate through other situations. And it's important to be respectful and not take for granted the time and effort that this new proposal will need and the trust that you want to be able to build on just because things may have gone well in the past. Broadly speaking, so much of building support is about communication. Um, if this is your first experience with a grant proposal, there's going to be a lot to learn. I know from the poll earlier that many of you are experienced or at least had some kind of exposure to being involved in the process. But ideally, your colleagues will support you and the process. And remember that how we approach these conversations and the experience of learning about a grant or a potential idea can really impact how people respond to the idea. So when it comes to the proposal, our stakeholders are really critical. This list of stakeholders changes depending on your situation, right? So your library size, the level of effort of the grant, but take the time to think about it because it really does add time and steps to the proposal building, the review process, getting buy-in from your stakeholders. 
people really want to feel involved. They want to feel heard, to see that their ideas and their value is reflected in the work that we do. And you want people to be excited and at the very least interested in the opportunity. So when you start considering a proposal idea, just start by jotting down some of your stakeholders, right? Anyone who might need to review, to approve, to contribute. Um, if you're in a really large library system, it's possible that your city government may need to get involved in an application. If you're going after half a million dollars for a construction grant, there might be some additional hoops that you need to jump through in order to get everything signed. So make sure that people have the time to contribute and that the feedback that they bring really has the potential to make the idea and the proposal stronger. There's always a little bit of a twist that comes with feedback that we receive from stakeholders and we are all human and we come with a huge set of emotions. And the twist is that the feedback that you get from your stakeholders can sometimes feel negative, but still be supportive. So it can absolutely feel like people are opposed to a proposal idea and they might be, it's possible because our tone and approach really does matter, right? How we reply to people, how we engage with them. Um, as an advocate for a project idea, you're likely to be a little biased because of the time you have spent developing the project. And we can get a little attached and excited about something. But these stakeholders may challenge some of your thinking and ideas, but the goal is always to strengthen the final submission. So be open to their contributions. Engaging your stakeholders is a process that can start really small, one to two individuals helping you to brainstorm a plan. And it's a bit of a tightrope to walk sometimes because you have to get your ducks in a row. You don't want to wait too long and have people talking about the possibility of the project before they hear about it from you or whoever is leading. So make sure you understand the scope of who needs to be involved in the conversations. We wanna do some prep work thinking through some of the potential concerns that you may hear from your stakeholders. And we're going to do a little chat exercise. And so in chat, you can go ahead and pop in just some of the concerns that your stakeholders may bring to the table. And it doesn't matter what the idea is. It can be absolutely anything. What do you think some people might be prepared to say and ask about when it comes to any type of proposal that the library may get involved in? Ongoing costs are a big one, right? Sustainability, that's huge, not just for the library, but for the funder. The funder wants to know that their money is going to have a lasting impact. And what is the library going to have to do in order to keep things going? Do we have the staff, right? Do we have the capacity to do things? Um, that's a huge question, right? The past two and a half years have been intense, right? We are doing a lot of work already. What are you trying to add to the plate? How does it help the patrons in the future, right? We are all about serving our community, serving our patrons. How is this going to help them? How many people will it reach? What's the scope? Are we going to go after a bunch of money, but it's going to have limited impact? Schedules, time constraints, logistics, those things are my favorite. Um, I really like those technical details and I want to dig into them too. Like those are things I want to be prepared to show someone. Here's the impact of the timing. Here's when we need to be ready to start what we're going to need to be successful. So I appreciate all those comments and suggestions and ideas. This type of activity is a great thing to do with maybe a trusted colleague, right? Before you submit a proposal, for greater review, talk through some of these things with someone else who's coming at it with fresh eyes, right? You want someone who can help you be prepared to answer some of these questions. And one of the realities is that a great idea and a great opportunity sometimes comes at the wrong time. Capacity issues are always a big concern. And when organizations feel stretched, we really have to consider what goes and what stays. Where are we going to keep spending our energy? So don't give up even when resistance is there and the timing isn't right. Keep your records, keep your research, be prepared for the next opportunity. And remember that critical advocates, the people that we share the proposal with, that we ask to review them, their feedback really does help to make for a better proposal. Another thing that I saw come up in the chat was what's in it for me, right? How is it going to, to help my work? And it's an important reality that underlies a lot of our decisions. 
if you have a dog in your life, like I do, the question is usually pretty easy. Um, snacks, walks, naps, dog's happy. Like, just got a good life. But our stakeholders are usually a little more complicated. And I don't mean for this to sound like it's a selfish or self-absorbed thing, because we really think of the me as applying to not just an individual, but if you have a manager, they're thinking about the team, the people who report to them. If you have a library director, they're thinking about the entire organization. You're really thinking about it, what's in it for me uh, in our community, right? So think about it broadly. But when you're building organizational support, think through this question before you approach those stakeholders, right? So that you can be prepared. Um, and Steph mentioned that the funders, right, they're really interested in the me being the community, what's in it for the community? How is the whole community going to benefit from their investment? Some examples of benefits that people see from grants and projects are skill development. So for those of you who haven't worked on projects in the past, this is an opportunity to flex some project management skills and budgeting skills. Um, you may get actual staff training as part of a project. A lot of the work that we do at Web Junction, that's exactly what we deliver is staff training. It's an opportunity to develop new skills, new resources, and new partners. So think very broadly about what this might look like to your stakeholders. All right, Steph, over to you. Thanks, Kendra. That's such great information for starting to build the buy-in internally so that you can submit a strong application. So let's turn to that now. The very first thing that Kendra and I always do when we start is we read the requirements. And then we read the requirements again. So before you begin, make sure that you can provide everything that the funder is going to need for your application. Do they require tax statements? Do they need your organization's budget? Who are you going to need to coordinate to get all those pieces together? It can be a pretty frustrating experience to be scrambling at the end before a deadline and asking colleagues for last minute paperwork. So create a schedule and create a checklist and put all those requirements that you're going to need, all the components you're going to need to build your package, your submission package, put all that in your checklist. This really ties into the, the whole planning process. It's also an opportunity to determine who's going to be doing the work so that we understand roles and responsibilities for submitting the grant proposal. Now, once you have started to draft your proposal, it's really great to get outside perspective. Kendra talked about critical advocates. We use those um, when we build our proposals both internally and externally. So there will be times when I'll ask folks with outsider eyes outside of our organization to be a reviewer of an idea. There are also times when I ask other parts of my organization, who people in my organization, to please have a look at it. It's really helpful to avoid people who have the curse of knowledge, who've been working on something for a long time. Sometimes you get very blind to things. So not having prior knowledge of the proposal can really help with your review. Now, you might be from a really little library with really few possibilities for staff in, internally to help ask, but there's a really good chance that you have a network who can help you. So you could reach out to a trusted colleague in the field or adjacent to the field and ask them to review your proposal. Just be sure to give people enough time. Uh, ask them in advance, let them know what the schedule and timing is for when you would provide the draft. It's also a really good way to keep yourself on track. And don't let perfect be the enemy of good here. Get the draft out, get it reviewed. It doesn't have to be perfect when you send it out. Just give yourself some time to improve once you get the feedback from them. Another great opportunity for um, review feedback is to ask the funder if they're open to it. Might've mentioned before, reaching out to your program officer is really helpful. Not every funder will let you do it, but we found that those who will are really generous with their time. And if their rules allow it, they'll look at the proposal before your final submission and provide preliminary feedback on a draft. Check and see with them if it's possible and what the deadline and the timeline is for that kind of review. Then the next step is proofread. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but it's really important. Proofread, put your best foot forward, dot your I's, cross your T's, show them your best, go beyond a spell check and look for incorrect use of words, make things tidy. Are the font styles and sizes all the same? Does it all fit on the two pages that the funder requires? I got to tell you, Kendra is a fantastic person at formatting. She is a formatting Jedi. 
So every time I write a proposal and I have just that last three lines on the third page when it has to be two pages, I send it to her. She can always find a way to make it fit. So if you've got that person on your staff or if you are that person, good, flex those muscles. The next thing you need to do is make sure that your submission is authorized to leave your organization. So find the person who needs to sign off on it. It could be someone, depending on what the the funder requires, they may ask for your director, they may ask for your board of directors, find out who's going to be signing, make sure that they're not on vacation when you need before you need to sign it and get their approval by the deadline. Then submit all the requirements. Go back to your checklist in the second point. Follow through all your checklists, check all your boxes. Do you have it all? Excellent. Get it in by the deadline. And then you'll wait. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get your grant right away, but usually we have to wait, huh, Kendra? Sometimes it's up to a year from the first thing we submit to the when we actually hear about it. But no matter what, celebrate. You know, committing to this process is a huge accomplishment. Celebrate the hard work that you did and appreciate the contributions of your colleagues. And then once you get the award, then you can celebrate all together again. Yeah, thanks, Steph. And I think that that you know, laying out the process like this and the one that we showed earlier, which is a much more intensive flow chart of all the little steps that we do, it can look so different depending on how big of a project you're going after, right? So a $500 project, a $5,000 project might look very, very different than something that is over $100,000. But the steps really remain the same, right? It's how long it might take to get through things, how many people you have to involve in the process. That's where a lot of the difference is. But the same steps for successful strategies are the same, right? You want those critical advocates. You want to mind your P's and Q's. You want to engage in that relationship building with the funder. It's all really important. It's just on a different scale at, at other times. So Steph, one of the things we, we talking about the idea of celebrating it really is an accomplishment to submit these things. And I can truly say that even in the awards we have not received, we've learned a lot. Right. So either we've had to get some subject matter expertise and flex our muscles in a new way and find some new partners who might potentially work with us and, and get to know them. But not every project has been funded. We know that. So, Steph, what happens if you don't get the award? Yeah, that's a really good question, Kendra, because that does happen. Um, well, first, you have the grieving process. I, I, I'm, I'm kidding. It's true. It's true. But it's an opportunity. You know, it's my job to find the opportunity in pretty much everything. So what you just said was really important. You're finding a way to make new relationships, to learn new things. That's been great. How can you use that next? One of the things that I try to do, whether I've gotten an award or not, is reach out to the funder after the notification of, war of awards has have gone out. And if I got the award, I'd like to find out well, what did the reviewers say? Was What was the context for deciding that this was good? Is there extra information that I should know that could help inform the implementation of the project? If we didn't get the award, I definitely want to follow up with the program officer if I have the chance and say, can we have a debrief on what went well with this proposal? What worked for you? What do I need to know if I want to continue to do this work? Should I refine it and resubmit for another cycle, maybe in a year, do I need to actually improve something and not, not continue down this lane? Do I need to go into a different area? Or maybe the funder is going to say, you know, this just wasn't our priority area. And somehow I missed that. That's my chance to say, okay, do you know other opportunities? Do you know other funders that might be interested in funding in this area if you see merit in this proposal? And, you know, funders know each other. They get together in their in the county, in the region, in the state. It's it's really possible that they might be able to connect you or bridge you to another funder that really is looking to do that exact same work. So just reaching out and seeing as, as a way to continue the conversation and really to learn and grow from the feedback that you get from them. It's that's I think that's the best opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the additional resources that we have available for you to be able to continue your 
learning on grant seeking and developing some of your skills. So we mentioned an organization called Candid. They used to be called uh, the Foundation Center. And we have a self-paced course in the Web Junction course catalog on grant seeking for libraries. And that walks through some of the things that we talked about and as well as going more in depth about a few things around budgeting and funding, definitely worth checking out. Again, it's free and it's self-paced. Another is a webinar and some information in an article around beyond book sales. And this is about fundraising, which is different, right? Fundraising is a different category, but there is some alignment there between the types of activities that happen and what you may be able to learn. So we encourage you to check that out and what it looks like to a lot of it. Again, relationship building, I think is a good one. We also have some topics on budgets and funding, and I love budgeting. I love a spreadsheet. It is my geeky superpower. I could just spend all day in a spreadsheet. So we do have a collection of resources on Web Junction about finding grant money and budgeting. One of the things that we really want to make sure resonates with you and that hits home is that you need to ask for enough money to do what you need to do. Sometimes this is dictated by the grant, right? They will say this is a $2,500 grant to do X, like you don't have a whole lot of flexibility. And so maybe budgeting isn't a major concern. You can look at it and kind of sketch it out and say, yep, I can definitely do that. But the online course that I mentioned, that Grant Seeking for Libraries, talks about how funders really want to see more library proposals submitted. Uh, in interviews that Candid did while they were making the course, they heard from funders about how they actually needed to encourage libraries to apply for funding or to ask them to request more funding than they initially did. So don't be afraid to think big and be realistic when you build your budgets. It's pretty amazing when you start digging in to all the different categories and the work that goes into running a project. And so for us, sometimes that comes when one person, a critical advocate, reads the proposal and then looks at the budget and says, well, how are you going to pay for this? Like, where is that? money coming from? Is it supplies? Do you need software? Do you need a new laptop? Do you need hotspots? Do you need staff time? Um, all of these things. Do you need to be able to rent space? Tons of things go into that. So going through your proposal and thinking about that in terms of what will this cost me is really important. And that sometimes is a great tool for someone else who understands how your library works to be able to ask some of those questions and to dig in. But just don't be afraid to ask for what you need. And the funder can help you with that. Sometimes we'll hear when we talk to program officers that, well, we really expect that these awards are going to be around $50,000. And we'll look and see, is this something that we can successfully deliver for that much money? And here's what we think it's going to cost, right? So talk to your program officer, talk to people who um, manage the budget at the library, talk to people who create the budget for the library, really understand where those costs might come from. And in two weeks, when I do the follow-up course on project management, successful strategies, we're going to talk a little bit about managing the budget there as well. The next main area is community discovery. We talked about that, you know, what's in it for me, what's in it for the community. It's really important to be able to articulate these needs and talk about how it is you know what you know about your community. And there are so many different ways to go about this. One is, you know, surveys are one way that people often find out about what they're community is interested in, uh, if we have, you know, collection development, right? If you have a hundred holds on one book, you kind of see like there's a need here, right? A lot of interest in the community. Sometimes it's harder to get to the things that people would like to see the library do because they have a hard time thinking beyond what they know of the library. I think one of the things that is still universal, if you ask people, well, what do you think about when you think of libraries? they're going to say books, right? And it's not a bad thing, but there's so much more, right? And I really, I would love if one of the first things people said was, you know, heart of the community. It's, it's where um, people can go to do so many things. And for us, right, that means computers, it means space, it means 
partners who come to the library to help to support our patrons. It means having story times, endless services, right? Like just the services that libraries offer to impact their communities are deep. How do you know what else they might need in order to be able to grow? So we've done a couple of projects over the years that have looked at things like space planning. So there's an image here on the left about a prototype that a library did to think about how they might be able to change the library. And it was something they shared with the patrons and they thought about exploring that. And then the image on the right is from the Waimea Public Library in Hawaii. And they took this board to a 4th of July celebration and they asked what would make the library better? And they gave people dots and they were able to mark what was exciting to them, what they thought would be interesting. And the library was able to use some of that information as they did planning. So we have a lot of these resources highlighted on Web Junction. You're welcome to check them out and to read some of the success stories that libraries have used to do this step of community discovery. All right, Steph and I, you're welcome to reach out to us via email. I've just put our email addresses there so you can reach out with any questions that you may have and we'd be happy to, to respond to those in the future. Thank you. Thank you, bye.